Hello my beautiful badgers, here's a very quick video for you. I was watching It's Oik's stream the other day during the Messy Code at Game Jam. He was making his game and he was complaining about TextMesh Pro, how there wasn't a way to automatically resize the container of his text so it fits with the size of the text. And we can resize the text itself, so the text goes really big or really small depending on the size of the container that you put it in, but not the container itself. Look, they're all, no matter the size and the, the number of rows we've got of text, the box is always the same size. So I made a very quick script. Let me just turn it on so you can see. I even put my own little gizmo here so it looks pretty. And if we click play, dum, dum, dum. now it's automatically resizing this box to the size of the text. Isn't that wonderful? And if we get out of maximize and go in here I'll show you that it's automatically picked up the GUI but we can if we wanted to drag it in manually or we could actually change it to be somewhere completely different I'll also just say on your text do make sure you've got it set over here to be stretched out so that you do have it uh, you know, zero, 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 fully stretched out over here so that it will resize to the size of the container for the text box as well. You can still put in here your extra settings like I've done, put padding uh, on the margins, top left, right and bottom to give it some nice little uh, layout, make it look good. But generally that's all you need to do. Let's pop inside the code and see what you need to do. Let's make a new file for this video. Now I've named my file TMP size fitter, whatever you want to name it, it's all right by me. Just do make sure you put a namespace and have your namespace, whatever you want to be, so it doesn't conflict with anything Unity is doing or anything anyone else is up to. There we go. I'm also going to put in down here a add component menu because I want this new script to be in the same place as the other layout scripts from Unity. So we're just going to call this one uh, TMP YouTube video just to make it easy to, to find it later. Now here we're going to have some magic. We're going to have one serialized field in this entire script and if we have got a value then great but if not it's going to automatically get a value for it. Now I'm going to use TMP row here text test max pro. I'm not going to put it in the, in the using because I'm only actually using it once and that's to get this text mesh pro you GUI and it wants to name it for me thank you so much now when it comes to the public we're also going to use this tm pro dot text mesh pro GUI and here it knows the name I want to give it and it thinks this is what I want to do normally this is what I would want to do just return out the value here and then we've got a protected uh, read-only version of this privacy rights variable. However, we want to do a little bit more fiddling about. We're going to say that if our um, text mesh pro is null, and also if this transform that we're living on has a get com or not get card, get component in children, because we're looking for his kids, and we're going to be looking for this text mesh pro you gooey gooey and there we go. If it has got one of those, then we're going to do things. What are we going to do? We'll make it look pretty first of all. We're going to put this value as the transform of the get component in children, the text pro component. And then we're going to say um, down here, oh, before we do that, we need to make another variable. So this is going to be a private rect transform. And I'm going to call this one M underscore text mesh pro rect transform. And under here, we're going to do a public version of it. And now we are going to just spit out this value. And over here, we're going to say, you know what? I'm going to put the value of this. It's going to be our text mesh pro rect transform. Lovely. So if it doesn't have anything, and we try to read this variable's value, then it will check, hey, do I, I've got nothing, but does, do I have a child that has this component? Yes, all right, let's start spitting out some values there. Then we're gonna make a, a very similar rect 
transform, but it's this current rect transform that we're on. So it's this rect transform. And over here, we're going to do a public, I mean, instead of calling it rect transform, because then it will just look a bit messy, I'm just going to call it rect. And here's our protected one. Again, you'd be like, that's all we're going to do. No, nope, we're going to do it a little bit, much like we did here. So we're going to say, put this on another line so it's pretty. And we're going to split this on another line so it's pretty. There we go. We're going to put an if statement, much like we did here. We're going to say if our m rect transform is null, then we're going to say get the component rect transform and spit out rect transform. Do you know what though? The text merge pro had it like this. I'm going to do the same thing for my public one. I'm going to call it rec transform with a lowercase r. I don't normally like that because look, it's telling you, oh, naming convention, that's not good. Put an uppercase. Normally I would do that. But look, TextMatch Pro was doing it with a lowercase r. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing. Keep it, keep it similar. I know it's crazy, isn't it? Down here, we're going to have one more variable that we're going to class. It's a, another private, which we don't need to serialize. And it is a float. And it's not width. Oh, why was it going to go width? It's preferred height. Preferred height. And now we're going to have a public float preferred height. And now it knows what I want to do. I don't want to have a setter. I just want a getter. Thank you so much. And that is our variables defined. So there's this got a bit of logic thrown into here. So if it doesn't have a value, but it's got a child that's got text mesh probably it'll automatically put the value in for us. And here we've got a uh, rec transform that it's not serialized, but it will just grab the rec transform of our component that we're setting on. And here we've got a, a rec transform for text mesh pro and our preferred text. Down below, now we're going to have an awake. Uh, oh no, we don't even need an awake on this part. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? A set height. So void set height. I can hear you all screaming. Yes, it is a private void set height. And in here, we're going to say that if our text mesh pro is in fact null, then return out of here because we want to escape. And now we're going to just set our preferred height at being our text mesh pro preferred height. Easy one. And then we're going to say that our rect transform size delta is going to be a new vector too. And if I did tab, it would think that I want to put preferred height, preferred height, because these are the two floats it can think of. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do rect transform x. Well, that's the width. Um, oh, hang on. Size delta dot x. Sorry, I apologize. So rec transform size delta x. That's my current width and my new height to make a, my transform size delta. Now, bear in mind that even though this is a read-only public variable, you can still manipulate the, the values within it. So always be careful of that. I can't change which actual object it's referring to as the rec transform, but all of the values of this object I can still manipulate. So always do be careful. That's our set height. That does most of our magic. Now we're just going to have an on enable and we're going to say set height and we're going to have an on start because I actually know a start, not an on a start, a start set height again because I'm just a bit paranoid. But then every time you're going to change the size of your text in game live, maybe maybe that's going to happen, then this box should update as well. So we're going to have an update. And in then we're going to do a little bit of error handling to say is the preferred height does not equal the text mesh pro preferred height. So did they change? Well, if they did change, then we want to reset our height. That's it. That's our code. That's all we need. Very short and sweet. Let's pop back inside Unity and play about it. I spent more time explaining it than we did. And if I go to add component, we look in the layouts folder. We should have, here we go, temp YouTube video. 
and there's the content size. So here's my old one, so with my little gizmo icon. Now if we click here, we see that the text mesh pro is exposed, but do not worry, we don't need to drag it in. If we want to, we can just drag it in like that, but I don't want to. Leave it back. Let's see if it actually works. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to debug mode so we can see all of the hidden private variables that aren't serialized and see if they all update. Click and play. Do they automatically all update? Yes, they do. They've all got values thrown in there. Look at that description. It's got the uh, rec transform of this and it's also got the rec transform of the text and font. And you will see here it's automatically updated the height. And here it says preferred height. If I change to this one, preferred height has changed here and the box has changed its height as well. And if I click on this one, you'll see that uh, 382 for my delta height is now the same as my preferred height for the text mesh pro. That's it. That's all it is. It's all it takes. Three seconds really for going and away you go. I'm sure there must be a built in way of doing this as standard within text mesh pro and unity, but I haven't found it. So it just took me literally a few seconds to write my own code to do the same thing. Hopefully this helps somebody out there. If it hasn't helped you, then why have you been watching this video? If you do want to see more, click on that big juicy red subscribe button to a lot of people down below. And if you do like it, click it. Till next time. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.